वेलकम एवरी वन इट्स इंडिया नंबर वन गुकेश टेकिंग ऑन एस एल नारायणन एट द फीडे वर्ल्ड कप ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री राउंड नंबर थ्री दिस इज द सेकेंड गेम देर फर्स्ट गेम एंडेड इन अ ड्रॉ सो एवरी थिंग टू प्ले फॉर गुकेश ओपन द गेम विथ वन ई फोर नारायणन प्लेइंग विद द ब्लैक पीसेस रिस्पॉन्स ई फाइव वेरी सॉलिड ओपनिंग अ ड्रॉ इन दिस गेम वुड मीन दैट दे वुड गो टू द टाई ब्रेक्स but a win by any of the players would advance them to round number 4 we have knight to f3 and knight c6 and now gukesh has to decide whether he wants to go for the italian or the spanish he goes for the spanish here the ruy lopez on the board narayanan hits the bishop with a6 bishop a4 what's amazing about this opening is that it's been played millions of times at top level chess and yet every single time we come up with some new ideas and here also we are waiting for both these amazing players to come up with something new castles and will narayanan play b5 no he goes for the open variation of the ruy lopez wow that is a bold choice because it leads to much sharper games d4 played by gukesh of course you don't want to take this pawn because then your knight is in trouble in the center of the board so you first kick the bishop away the bishop comes back to b3 and next you want to support your knight in the center with d5 this is all well known theory and now gukesh picks up the e5 pawn attacking the d5 pawn with his queen and the bishop sl narayanan defends it with bishop e6 and now there are moves like c3 knight d2 but gukesh goes for queen e2 this is not the most popular move this is the third most popular move and you can see narayanan is ready for it he doesn't think much he simply goes bishop e7 one of the ideas of queen e2 is that you can get your rook to d1 and put pressure on the d5 point black castles and this is a very important theme because here the main move is c4 but gukesh goes for c3 which is kind of relatively unknown but this is gukesh's plan knight to c5 played and gukesh does do that often he goes for slightly lesser played lines in well known positions so in that sense this is what he's doing here bishop comes to c2 i like white's position with the bishops angling here but narayanan is going to neutralize this bishop with a very interesting maneuver he starts off with bishop g4 good move because this bishop is going to h5 and eventually to g6 to trade it off how does gukesh react to it is the question gukesh still in his prep perhaps he has 1 hour 31 minutes but this is the moment where he thinks for a solid 19 minutes and then plays his pawn up to h3 clearly you don't want to be taking this knight and winning this pawn because after queen f5 there's a mate as well as the knight is threatened and ng6 is met with rook d5 with a good position so narayanan keeps the bishop on the board he plays bishop h5 getting closer to the idea of bishop g6 knight comes to d2 now an important move here is to break in the center with f6 gukesh gets up from the board and narayanan must play f6 here but no he goes rook e8 and this is not a good idea because now the contours of this position are being drawn white has the space with e5 and black has this slightly weakened pawn on d5 and this turns into something very important uh, in the game first gukesh plays his knight to b3 a nice move because this knight is quite an important piece and you want to get it out from the board and narayanan goes back bishop to f8 now there are problems with the e5 pawn because he's put the rook here the knight is attacking and what could be more logical than this you know bringing your rook to e8 and putting pressure here but this pawn is not falling actually and what is more relevant is that this pawn on d5 starts to become very weak and gukesh plays the bold move g4 this is very important because with this move 
you are breaking the pin the knight can now comfortably defend e5 and narayanan has to move his bishop away of course he's going to do that and the bishop will go back to g6 but once it does then you have to figure out what to do as gukesh so bishop g6 is a good move and now if you play here gukesh takes knight c5 bishop c5 if he does this now the next move is extremely instructive because after taking you should take here on g6 beautiful move so first gukesh takes which is the correct decision he takes on c5 here and narayanan takes back but now why is taking on g6 so important because after at g6 the knight is poorly placed on c6 it can go to e7 but then there's no square on g6 and a move like bishop f4 gives white a very solid advantage but gukesh doesn't do that he doesn't take he plays b4 and now narayanan can actually first take on c2 this is a good move takes takes and then move the bishop away the knight would then later have the square it is possible he goes bishop b6 which is also fine which is also fine now this b4 move maybe it was not really required for gukesh but he liked it he liked playing that and now next up he needs to think about this pawn on e5 because there are plans like knight e5 knight takes e5 and f6 pinning the knight to the queen so gukesh goes and defends the pawn but now black has an amazing move think about what is the best move for black yes it is queen f6 wow what a move because if you take there is rook takes e2 and if you play here bishop g5 then there is queen e6 and black is doing completely fine but narayanan makes a mistake with queen d7 and gukesh now finds an amazing move white to play take advantage of this weakness on d5 square how does gukesh do it well narayanan has missed his chance to trade off these important bishops gukesh goes bishop b3 and all of a sudden big trouble now for black very important is the fact that this knight does not have any good squares to go to narayanan did have in mind that if gukesh attacked that pawn that he would go back knight e7 and defend it that was his plan but the knight is very passive it's not a good knight and now gukesh can actually create more play here he is in control because yes his king side does look weak but that's not very relevant he has space here knight and bishop treading on each other's toes and now he can strike with the a4 move also notice that bishop e4 which is a nice move doesn't work because of queen e4 and rook d7 hanging so a4 brilliantly played by gukesh I was expecting Narayanan to be very solid here with c6. Yes, his position is passive and Gukesh can kind of build this up in slow fashion. However, Narayanan decides to lash out with the move c5. Not really a great move because now the d5 pawn is permanently weakened. You can't really defend it with the pawn to c6. And now what white will do here is he'll take Gukesh will take this pawn on c5 yeah he's thinking a bit he's not sure if he wants to do it yes he does it takes and now how the position has changed is that after bishop takes c5 the d5 pawn is weak right so the knight is defending it you just go bishop g5 and you want to take this and then win this pawn and in this way white is better but gukesh goes knight d4 and here narayanan must get rid of this knight this is a pesky knight get rid of it and after rook takes d4 play rook c8 c3 is slightly weakened this is good for black but if you take c takes d4 here still rook a c8 and black is fine it's not like black is better or something but definitely things are under control but narayanan goes b4 this is a bad move because now after c takes b4 and you can see gukesh is instantly ready c takes b4 bishop takes b4 now get your last play last piece into the game as gukesh you know you have a beautiful knight you have a beautiful bishop your bishop here is also doing a good job pawn is controlling a lot of space in the center the only piece that is not playing in the game 
is this rook on a1 and he gets it into the game fantastic move and now he's looking at the c6 square this is a great position here for gukesh and black is in big trouble bishop a5 played by narayanan and white to move and win look the c6 square is important knight is controlling it go bishop g5 take this guy and just settle down on the c6 square there's just no way in which black can counter this and gukesh has 17 minutes to find this very strong move bishop g5 will he play it what he sacrifices a piece he plays knight c6 what is gukesh's idea here you can see him slightly staring at his opponent getting up from the board he feels very confident because he's attacking the bishop and if the bishop moves he wants to take on e7 and then take on d5 so clearly narayanan has to take on c6 and you can see that he's stopped in his tracks he's a bit surprised knight takes c6 and now comes gukesh's kind of brilliant idea here which is to take the pawn on d5 and now the point is bishop takes c6 would attack the queen so the only defensive move now is knight takes e5 insanely crazy because after bishop a8 the queen is attacked but you play your knight to d3 and attack opponent's queen and a variation could go queen f3 queen e7 rook d3 bishop d3 queen d3 rook a8 and black is still in the game but narayanan now blunders with knight b4 that is a terrible move because now after bishop takes a8 the queen attacks the queen is attacked and now knight d3 is not as powerful because this attack on the queen does not come through gukesh taking his time here he's clearly winning if you see he will be exchange up here and a pawn up he takes the <coughs> rook so three points up narayanan gets a pawn back with queen a4 maybe this was his idea all throughout but even if you just bring your piece back it is just a clear exchange of position for white but in fact gukesh finds rook a1 he's a bit surprised what is narayanan doing here the queen is attacked the bishop would be attacked and so the so is the pawn and all is done here white is completely winning queen b3 played by sl narayanan and now gukesh can maybe exchange the queens with queen e queen f3 yes there is some trouble with h3 pawn you could also take rook takes a5 that's how winning this position is there are many ways but he goes bishop e4 and he tells narayanan that your piece is hang you know i want to trade off a few pieces and that's how he wants to play and with 15 minutes on the clock narayanan is lost here there is no way for him he goes bishop takes e4 gukesh is going to take back that with the queen and there is a small tactical nuance here which is that you can take the pawn on h3 and if you take rook a5 there is queen takes g4 followed by the rook hanging so that's what narayanan is banking on when he played queen to h3 which is a good move but now gukesh may, should not take the bishop but he can improve his position with bishop g3 it seems like a good move here he has 13 minutes to work this solution out as to how is he playing for a win here and gukesh goes bishop e3 and he tells narayanan that hey your bishop is hanging now i've defended my pawn if you move the bishop your knight would hang so all in all this doesn't look that great for you narayanan has to find a move now he goes bishop c7 and if gukesh takes the knight and is greedy then bishop takes e5 is the final threat with bishop h2 and queen h2 coming in so gukesh must not take this this is important you can see how the top players keep posing their opponents with problems until the very end that's what makes them so strong now bishop c7 the best move is rook a c1 and gukesh finds it wow he finds it and the point is if you play bishop takes e5 
I have queen takes e5. If rook e5, that is rook c8, checkmate. And if you play queen g4, I can drop my queen back to g3 with a winning advantage. So he takes bishop b8. Also note, you couldn't take with the rook because of queen a8 and a back rank mate. So bishop b8 played. And now Gukesh. Well, one way is to be a little bit careful and go queen g2. Try to trade. But Gukesh is not one to go on the back foot. He goes rook c5, he defends his pawn here and he tells his opponent that next one your knight is hanging. So do something about it. But the knight is actually out of squares as well. There are no good squares for the knight. I'm thinking about this position. Narayanan plays his pawn up to h5 and the point here is that if you play queen takes b4 then after bishop takes e5 there is some counterplay and also the back rank problems are now solved because the pawn came to h5 this is still winning for white but Gukesh wants to maybe do it a little more smoothly rook c1 is the best move and with this move what he's saying is that you may win this pawn but next move I'm going rook c8 and trading your rooks and also your bishop would be hanging so very nice move rook c1 it also shows how gukesh is so good at converting positions he's not even uh, sort of getting in any trouble he's playing the best moves and he is making narayanan's task absolutely uh, difficult to make a comeback and he's moving in the distance back there while Narayanan is left alone to find some move to continue the game. Queen takes g4 is played. But now, queen takes queen seems very logical. Gukesh takes the queen. H takes on g4. And now the final move, which is rook c8 where you are bound to lose a rook because after takes takes the bishop is hanging narayanan stops the clock gukesh wins this game and advances to round number four where he'll win he'll play the winner of esipenko and francisco vallejo pawns but a great game here and great understanding shown by gukesh towards the end not at all easy the way he played this but narayanan of course he gave a great fight the only issue was that he didn't trade on c2 and that big bishop became important and here you can see gukesh telling narayanan that uh, what narayan asking what should he have played and gukesh saying rook e8 was not the main move the main move was to break with f6 and sometimes just forgetting the opening can create there you have f6 you should have played f6 is what gukesh is saying in the opening uh, of course the opening did play an important role, but Narayanan did have his chances even after the opening. Uh, Rook e8 was not such an illogical move, but in the end, he couldn't make much out of it and has to bow out of the World Cup. A great game between two talented Indian youngsters.